I got the idea for this video uh, from a TV show I saw on the Food Network called Throwdown with uh, Bobby Flay. And the, the premise of that show is that Bobby Flay is this great chef, and he goes around challenging people uh, who have restaurants where they have some kind of uh, food that they specialize in making, and then he try challenges them to see if he can make their food as well as, uh, as they can. So my idea was to take a look at some uh, Khan Academy videos and see if I could make uh, a competing video on the same topic. And just like in uh, Throws Down with Bobby Flay, the audience or the spectators come and they sample both of the foods and they uh, declare a winner. Uh, people through comments can judge to see if uh, my video is as good as his, if not better, or if his video is, uh, is better than mine. Now, I should let you know that I did not comb through 3,000 Khan Academy videos to try to find one um, that I didn't think was done so well. Um, I've really only looked at maybe five or six Khan Academy videos ever. Uh, it would just really take a long time to go through the 3,200 videos to try to find uh, one that wasn't that good, and that would be kind of unfair because, of course, out of over 3,000 videos, there are going to be some maybe that aren't as good as others. But I pretty much took a random sampling of a few, and usually I just try to pick a topic that I think is like a really important topic that maybe is kind of tricky to teach. In this case, I chose uh, the videos about the law of cosines, which is something from trigonometry. So Khan Academy has sort of three videos two that sort of build up to the law of cosines and then one video about the law of cosines. And I'll explain to you what the law of cosines, what you can do with the law of cosines first so we kind of know what the goal is here. I'd say the main uh, use of the law of cosines is to solve a question like you see here where two sides of a triangle are known. In this case, uh, CA is 10 centimeters and CB is uh, seven centimeters. And you know the angle between the two sides, in this case, 52 degree angle, and the law of cosines is used to find that missing side AB. Another situation where the law of cosines is useful, in this diagram we have the three sides of the triangle are known. We have uh, five, eight, and nine of the three sides. And the law of cosines, which is basically a formula, um, can also be used to solve for any of the angles, in this case, um, angle C. So the way the throwdown is going to work is that you are going to be uh, presented with a couple of buttons in a few seconds. So you can choose uh, whether you want to watch the uh, Khan Academy video first or whether you want to watch my video first. Um, after uh, you watch one of the videos, you'll have the option of watching the other video and to see if the videos are any good, you should see if you've learned the topic by trying to do those two questions, which you'll get an opportunity to see again after each video. So uh, when you see the buttons, select which one you want to see, and uh, may the best videos win. Now that we know some trigonometry, uh, let's use that trigonometry to, to solve some word problems. So let's get started with, this is exciting, this is a navigation problem. So I have a ship, and it needs to go from point A to point B. So let me draw that. So I'm going from point, from point A, which is that point, to point B. Let me draw a nice big, well not so big triangle. Big enough. There you go. Point A, because I need space to do my math. So let me, let's see, so this is point A. Point A, I will draw and move point A to point B. So this ship needs to go from point A to point B. And this problem tells us that the distance between point A and point B is 10 kilometers. 10 kilometers. So this guy sets sail, and because of whatever reason, he's a bad navigator, or the, the water is flowing faster, maybe upwards. Maybe the water is flowing in this direction. Let me draw that in blue. 
to, to show which direction the water is. Say the current is flowing in that direction. And he ends up off track. He actually ends up after five kilometers. So he travels for five kilometers. Let me do that in blue-green. He travels for five kilometers. And after five kilometers, he realizes that he has gone off track. And somehow, I don't know, maybe using his astrolabe, I don't, I don't really know what one is, but that's what people use when they're on ships to figure out where they are, I think. He realizes that he is 15 degrees off course. So he is 15 degrees off course. So what that means is that he's the, the, between his, the path he took and the path he should have took is 15 degrees. At least that's my interpretation of it. So this is 15 degrees. And of course, he's traveled five kilometers in the wrong direction, 15 degrees in the wrong direction. So what he needs to know is, so this is, this, let, me, let me draw a little ship. So this is where the ship is now. That's my ship. So now this guy, this poor, poor captain, needs to know, how far do I still have to go to get to point B? So let me, so he, he needs to know how far is, let me pick a nice color, how far is this distance right here? How far is this distance? This may just involve some trigonometry. So how can we figure out this distance? Well, let's, let's just break down uh, what we know. And, and that's how I do trig problems. I just keep messing around with it until I get the right answer. So let's see if we can, if we can, if we can tackle this problem that way. So what can we figure out? We know that this is 5 kilometers. This side is 5 kilometers. We know that this is 10 kilometers. We know this angle. Well, one thing I, I know I can figure out is, well, let's, let's, just, let's just make some right angles so we can start using some trigonometry. So let's draw, let me draw a right angle here. Right, just drop it straight down. So can I figure out what this side is right here? Let me draw that in a different color, in this brown color. Can I figure out what this side right here is? Well, this side is going to be what? We do, this is, if we look at this angle, this is adjacent to the angle. And this is the hypotenuse. So if, if we know the hypotenuse, we know the angle, we want to figure out adjacent. What, what trig function should we use? Let me write out down our SOKATOA. 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 So we know the hypotenuse. We want to figure out the adjacent. So what involves adjacent and hypotenuse? Ka, or cosine. So we know that the cosine of 15 degrees so I'm going to write over this just not to waste space. Cosine of 15 degrees is equal to this brown side. So let's just call this, I don't know, I'm just going to call it x. right? So this is equal to x over the hypotenuse, over 5. right? And if we solve for x, we get x is equal to 5 cosine of 15 degrees. Oh, well, maybe we made progress, maybe we didn't. Let's keep trying. All right, now let's see if we could figure out this side of this triangle. Well, this is to this angle. This is the opposite, right? This is the opposite. And we know the hypotenuse. So what trig identity should we, or a trig function should we use? Well, if we know the opposite, oh, if we want to figure out the opposite, and we know the hypotenuse and we know the angle. So what trig function deals with opposite? <laughs> I was going to say hypotenuse. But anyway, what, what trig function deals with the opposite and the hypotenuse? Well, that's, that's sine, right? So the sine, if we call this y, we know that y is equal to, well, doing it the same way, sine, oh, 5 sine of 15 degrees. Right. I skipped a step, right? Because we could say that sine of 15 degrees, sine of 15 degrees is equal to the opposite, y, over the hypotenuse, over 5. And then go, that step takes us here. We just multiply both sides by 5. And you get y is equal to 5 sine of 15 degrees. So that's pretty cool. We know this y. We know this x. Can we figure out what this length is? Let me draw it in yet another color. Can we figure out what the length of this side is? Well, we know from the problem that this whole length is 10. right? We know this whole length is 10. And we know that this little part of it is x, which is, we figured out, is 5 cosine of 15 degrees. So let's call this z. We know that z is equal to 10 minus x, right? Because this whole thing is 10. 
this thing is x, so z is equal to 10 minus x. And we already figured out what x is equal to. z is equal to 10 minus this. That's what x is. You didn't even have to use the variable x. We could have just written it like that. So 10 minus 5 cosine of 15 degrees. All right? That's this side. z is equal to 10 minus 5 cosine of 15 degrees. So we know z. We know y. This is a right triangle, and we're looking for this yellow side, whatever we want to call it. That the dis that's, that's the answer to the problem. Well, this 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 is starting to look easy. This is just the Pythagorean theorem. So so let's just, you know, y squared plus z squared is going to be equal to our. Let's just call this. I don't know. Let's call this m, picking an arbitrary letter. Let's call that m. So y squared plus z squared is going to be equal to m squared. So we could just say, let's just write that down. I don't know why I picked m, really just to confuse you, I think. So m squared is equal to, well, what's y squared? y squared is 5 sine of 15 degrees. So it equals, let me do it in that color, 5 sine of 15 degrees squared plus What's a z squared? Z is this, right? Z squared plus, I'm running out of space, 10 minus 5 cosine of 15 degrees squared. And now I just have to simplify this. And if you have a calculator, I mean, you could, you could do this without any simplification. But I want to get it as, as simple as I can. So let me just, so what's this squared? Well, this is equal to, let me draw a line here, because I don't want to get too messy. But I need all of this space. So this is equal to, what color am I using now? This is equal to, and remember, this is m squared. We're going to have to take the square root of all of this at the end to figure solve for m. So this is equal to 25 sine squared of 15 degrees. Or the sine of 15 degrees squared. That's just how you write it. And then we do a little bit of foil here to, to expand this. So plus plus let's see 100 minus you know this is just expanding this this expression minus 100 cosine of 15 degrees plus 25 cosine squared of 15 degrees all I, all I did is I expanded I said well this whole expression squared is equal to this squared minus 2 times the two things multiplied out. So that's 100 cosine of 15 degrees. And then I just squared this last term, which is plus 25 cosine of 15 degrees. If that confused you, you might want to re review the multiplying expressions. So let's see if we can simplify this further. So if we take this term and this term, we could simplify that to 25 times sine squared of 15 degrees plus cosine squared of 15. And you could kind of skip all this and just use a calculator and, and figure out this exact value. But I'm, I'm just going to keep working on it, just because I like to get it as simple as possible before I use the calculator. So that term and that term are that. And then it's plus this stuff, plus 100 minus 100 cosine of 15 degrees. All right? And then what is the sine squared of 15 plus the cosine squared of 15? That's one of our most basic identities, right? That's, that's the Pythagorean identity. And si sine squared of x plus cosine squared of x, or of theta, is just 1, right? So this term becomes 1. And I'm running out of time, so I'll continue in the next video. Welcome back. I was just chugging through the, the hairy math of this problem, which I think we're almost done. But as I was saying, we're, we're just simplifying this. And we have 25 times sine squared of 15 plus cosine squared of 15. And I said, well, that's an identity, right? Uh, remember, I undistributed this 25. So sine squared plus cosine squared of, of the same angle is 1. So I can simplify this to, and I will now change colors just to be arbitrary. So 25 plus 100 minus 100 cosine of 15 degrees. And this is what m squared is equal to. And I use the variable m because it stands for nothing relevant to this problem. And that equals 125 minus 100 cosine of 15 degrees. Now I have to use a calculator if I want to get a real answer. But the, the, the area, the, the possibility for error is much lower now that I've hopefully simplified it. So I could use my calculator, and let's see, the cosine of 15 degrees 
Cosine of 15 degrees, I'll write that down here. You can just use a calculator or a table to figure that out. It is equal to 0 0.96, 0 0.965993. So this term would be 125 minus 100 times this, right? So what's 100 times this? Well, that's just minus 96.5. 593, right? I just 100 times the cosine of 15 degrees. And now let me use the trusty calculator to figure out what that is. So if I say 125 minus 96.593, I get 28.407. So I have m squared is equal to 28.407. And so m is equal to the square root of that. It's going to be 5 point something, right? Square root. 5.3298. So 5.33. m is equal to 5.33. And we're done. The poor guy, he's got to figure out the right direction to go in. And he probably has to think about the current and all of that. but. He hasn't asked us that question, so we won't answer it. Uh, so, but uh, all he has left to go is 5.33 miles. So he's he's only has to go an, an extra 0.33 miles than he would have had he gone in in the right direction from the get-go. So hopefully that makes some sense. If it doesn't, um, well, not much I can do. But maybe you can and rewatch this video. Have fun. In the last video, we had a, a word problem where we had. Um, we essentially had to figure out the sides of a triangle, but instead of you know just being able to do the Pythagorean theorem and and because it was a right triangle, it was just kind of a normal triangle, and, and it wasn't a right triangle. And we just kind of chugged through it using Sokotoa and just our very simple trig uh, functions, and we got to the right answer. What I want to do now is introduce you to something called the law of cosines, which we essentially proved in the last video, but I want to kind of prove it in a more, you know, without the word problem getting in the way. And I want to show you, once you know the law of cosines, you can then apply it to a problem like we did in the past, and you'll do it faster. I, I have a, a bit of a, a, a mixed opinion about it, because I'm not a big fan of memorizing things. Uh, you know, when you're, when you're 40 years old, you probably won't have the law of cosines still memorized. But if you have that ability to start with the trig functions and just move forward, then you'll, you'll always be set. And, and I'd be impressed if you're still doing trig at 40, but but who knows? So let's let's go and, and let's and let's see what this law of cosines is all about. So let's say that I know this angle theta. I know this angle theta, and I know let's call this side, I don't know, a. Let's call this side b. I'm being a little arbitrary here. Let's call that. Oh, actually, let me let me stay in the colors of the uh, of the side. So that we, let's call that b. And let's call, let's call this C, and then let's call this side A. So if this was a right triangle, then we could have used the Pythagorean theorem somehow. But well, now, now we we can't. So what do we do? So we know A. Well, let's find, let's let's assume that we know B, we know C, we know theta, and then we want to solve for A. But in general, we can. You know, if as long as you know three of these, you can solve for the fourth. And once you know the law of cosines, so how can we do it? Well, we're going to do it the exact same way we did that last problem. We can drop a line here to make. Oh my God, that's messy. I thought I was using the line tool. Edit undo. Undo. So I can drop a line like that. I'm trying to make it. So I have two right angles. And then once I have right triangles, then now I can start to use trig functions and Pythagorean theorem, et cetera, et cetera. So, so let's see. So this is a right angle, and this is a right angle. So what is what is this side here? What is what is? Let me pick another color. I'm probably going to get too involved with all of the colors, but it's for your improvement. So what is this side here? What is the length of that side? That purple side. Well, that purple side is just you know, we use Sokotoa. I was it's good to write Sokotoa up here. Sokotoa. So this purple side is adjacent to theta, and then this blue or mauve side, B, is is uh, is the hypotenuse, right, of this right triangle. So we know that. Actually, I'm going to stick to one color because it'll take me forever if I keep switching colors. We know that cosine of theta. 
let's call this side. Let's call this kind of subside. Let's call this, I don't know. Let's call this d, side d. We know that cosine of theta is equal to d over b, right? And we know b. Or that d is equal to what? It equals b cosine theta. Now let's call this side e, right here. E. Well, what's e? Well, e is this whole c side, c side. Oh, that's interesting. This whole c side minus this d side, right? So e is equal to c minus d. We just solved for d, so side e is equal to c minus b cosine of theta. B cosine of theta. So that's e. We got e out of the way. And what's this magenta side going to be? Well, let's call this magenta. So let's call it m for magenta. M. Well, m is opposite to the to theta, so, and so if we what what involves well, we could now we know what we've solved for c as well, but we know b and b is simple. So what relationship gives us m over b, or involves the opposite and the hypotenuse? Well, that sine opposite over hypotenuse so we know that m over b is equal to sine of theta we know that let me go here m over b right because this is the hypotenuse is equal to sine of theta or that m is equal to b sine of theta right so we figured out m we figured out E, and now we want to figure out A. And this should jump out at you. We have two sides of a right triangle, and we want to figure out the hypotenuse. We can use the Pythagorean theorem. This Pythagorean theorem tells us A squared is equal to M squared plus E squared, right? Just the square of the other two sides. Well, what's M squared plus E squared? Let me switch to another color just to be arbitrary. So A squared is equal to m squared. m is b sine of theta. So it's b sine of theta squared plus e squared. Well, e we figured out is this. So it's plus c minus b cosine theta squared. Now let's just chug through some algebra. So that equals b sine b squared sine sine squared theta sine squared theta just means sine of theta squared right plus and then we just foil this out I, although I don't like using foil I just multiply it out but c squared minus two c b cosine theta plus b squared cosine theta right I just expanded this out by multiplying it out. And now let's see if we can do anything interesting. Well, if we take this term and this term, we get that those two terms are b squared sine squared of theta plus b squared cosine. That should be a, there should be a squared there, right? Because we squared it. B squared cosine squared of theta, and then we have plus c squared minus two b c cosine theta. Well, what does this simplify to? Well, this is the same thing as this equals b squared times a sine squared theta plus cosine squared of theta. Something should be jumping out at you. And then that's plus c squared minus 2bc cosine of theta. Well, this thing, cosine Sine squared plus cosine squared of any angle is is one. That's that's one of the earlier identities. That's just you know that's a Pythagorean identity right there. So this equals one. So then we're left with we're left with going back to my original color. We're almost there. A squared is equal to this term just becomes one. So b squared. We're just left with a b squared. Right plus c squared plus c squared minus 2bc 
cosine of theta. That's, that's pretty neat. And this is called the law of cosines. And it's, it's useful because you know if you know an angle and two of the sides of, of any triangle, you can now solve for the other side. Um, and, and, or, really, if you want to, if you know three sides of a triangle, you can now solve for any angle. So that also is very useful. The, the only reason why I'm a little bit you know, here there is I don't, I, it, it is good. If you are in trigonometry right now and you might have a test, you should memorize this because it'll make you faster and you'll get the answer right quicker. I'm not a big fan of, of just memorizing it without knowing where it came from because a year from now or two years from now when you go to college and you're, you know, it's been four years since you took trigonometry, you probably won't have this memorized. And if you face a trig problem all of a sudden, it's good to kind of get there from scratch. But with that said, this is a law of cosines. And if you use the law of cosines, you could have done that problem we just did a lot faster. Because we just, you, know, you just have to set up the triangle and then just substitute into this. And you could have solved for A in that ship off course problem. I'll see you in the next video.